Hello, I'm Steve Olson, the Manager of Training Services for Mesa. In this video, I'd like to walk through how to use joints or create joints in Fusion 360 to assemble a model. For this video, I'd like to leverage a model that's already built into Fusion as a sample. So if you'd like to follow along, feel free to grab the same file and follow along. I'm going to go and expand my data panel out. And in my list of projects, if I scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll find a bunch of different samples that Autodesk has built into the product for us. I'm going to go down to Workshop and Events. I'm going to go to the Adoption Path. I'm going to go to Mechanical Assemblies. And I'm going to go to number five, Assemblies and Joints. And there's one already started for us that has all the files that we need, and we just need to put them together. So you'll see that they've started a design for us, have a bunch of files, and some need to still be assembled. You'll notice it states read-only here because it's part of the data set. If you want to save your work, just uh, do a save as or a save copy as to begin saving it as your own file. So all we really need to do is use joints to assemble this. And there's a handful of different types we're going to use here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by placing this pin in the housing here. So I'm going to go up to assemble. I'm going to go to joint. Or you can see J for joint. So the way the joint command works, is I have to pick geometry on two components that it'll then bring together. As I hover over objects, you'll see that it basically starts highlighting individual faces, edges, corners. When I'm on a particular face, I can find the center of it. If I'm on an edge, I can find the midpoint or the corner. In the case of this pin, I want to grab this edge here, which represents the end of the chamfer between the two different diameters. And I'm going to bring it to the lower hole here, or basically the bottom of the counter bore in the housing. It's so going to bring those two objects together. In my dialog box, you'll see there's several different types of joints that we can make. Right now, it's assuming rigid, which is the default, which basically means there's no degrees of freedom. So basically, that pin and that hole will be locked together, and there's no spinning uh, at all. In our case, we want that pin to spin in the hole, so we'll switch over to a revolute, which will allow it to spin. And you can see here, I can even specify which axis it should be allowed to rotate about. Right now, the z-axis is what I want. If I hit animate here, you can see there's a little flag showing me the angle rotating through that, the, through all the degrees of freedom there. I'm going to go ahead and stop the animation and say OK. So now let's say I want to bring the gear down onto the pin. So I'm going to go back to the joint command. You can see there's actually even a, an icon right here. I have a tendency to go underneath the assemble drop down, just a, a habit of mine. So I'm going to come up here to the gear, get that edge, come down to the pin. Now in our case here, it's going to bring those two edges together. And I actually want a little bit of an offset. So I'm going to change the Z offset on this joint to be negative 3, which will push the gear down. I actually want the gear to go down. So make sure, in this case, maybe make it a positive 3. Positive or negative 3, depending upon whichever one you need, just to get the gear to move down the pin a little bit. It's still using Revolute because that's the last type we used. Actually, I'm OK with this being rigid, meaning the pin will spin in the hole and the gear will be tied to the pin. That's, that's what I'm happy with. I'm okay with that. So I'm going to go ahead and say okay here. The next thing I like to do is I like to create an as-built joint between the connecting rod and this guide block. And I need to make sure that the connecting rod is able to slide through the guide block. So I'm going to go up here to assemble. I'm going to go to as-built joint because the two components are already in the correct position. It's just a matter of assigning the joint between them. So I'll pick the components, I'll pick the connecting rod, I'll pick the guide block, 
Now you can see it's trying to do a rigid, which is not what I want because we would have no motion in our assembly then. I'm going to come down and I'm going to make it a slider, which will allow me to pick one direction for the components to slide against each other. In this case here, I can either pick this edge or one of the end faces. It's kind of up to you whichever way you want to work. I'm actually going to try this, select this edge. And sometimes that doesn't always work. So if I click, it didn't seem like it liked that or understood what I was trying to get at. So if I pick the end here, now it seems to be able to understand what I'm trying to go for. You can see that it slides back and forth. I can animate that. So either picking the edge or the end face, basically it ends up as an edge parallel to or a face perpendicular to the direction it's going to move. So I go ahead and say OK, and there's that direction. The next step to this process would be to put the crank arm to connect between the connecting rod and the gear. And you can see here on the crank arm that there's actually an opening that kind of fits around the the connecting rod and we're going to use a an option called between two faces to allow us to get the mid plane between those two open faces let's go into to doing that so i'm going to go into assemble i'm going to go to joint in my right click menu i have between two faces So I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to pick this face here as my first one, orbit around and get my second one. So now as I find geometry, it's going to interpolate a midplane between them and project that constraint to that. So as I pick this edge here, I'm going to get a joint origin at that midplane at that center. Now, to get the, the center of the hole over here, I zoom in here. So you can see here I've got the hole at the top, bottom, and midpoint. If I hold down control right now because it has that highlighted, it'll lock my selection into that plane. It'll make it a little bit easier for me to get the midpoint. So I held down control to let it know I'm keeping that, that selection, and then I pick the middle of the cylinder of that hole brought everything over except for, well, it brought over the, the arm, but it didn't bring over the the bushings. That's okay. As soon as I say okay here, it will bring those over. Now, before I do that, I want to make sure I'm using the right type of joint, which would be Revolute. I'll say okay. And it'll bring those bushings over. So that's sometimes misleading. You think, oh, I didn't do it right because the we didn't bring all the, the components over. It actually does that after you accept the, the constraint. So the last part to this is to bring this end of the connecting rod to this raised section here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to Assemble, go to Joint. I'm going to get the bottom hole here. I'm going to come over here to this one. And if you're worried that it may not be at the right level, or sometimes, you know, doing a, like a Revolute may not work properly because it's not lining up, uh, or not, a, a key, it's trying to raise it up or bu up above or below that midline over here, we can actually use a cylindrical, which would give it the freedom to not be on that face. So it could spin around that opening and slide up and down. And that's what I usually do here to make sure I've get the right motion. If you want to, you can do the uh, save as. Before I finish this example, I'd like to just take a look at how we can examine some of the mechanical motion that we have. So here I can actually grab a component and click and drag. So I should be able to grab some sort of object here and drag it around and, and see the motion.
but I also can have the software play the motion for me. So if I go under joints over here, on the very first Revolut joint that we put on there, which for me would be 73 it looks like, I can right click on that and I can say either animate joint or animate model. If we go to animate model here, you'll see that it will play the degrees of freedom for us. And it'll do that until I hit escape. I could also right click on that. And there's drive joints. So if I go to drive joints, it'll allow me to put a different degree of freedom or a different degree in for that rotation. I want to set it back to zero here real quick because I want to also do a motion study. So under assemble here, we can go to motion study. And what motion study will allow me to do is allow me to pick up a joint, in our case, Revolut uh, 73. You can see here it has an uh, angular degree of freedom. If it was something like this uh, cylindrical, it actually would show me both degrees of freedom, but we only have one, which is the rotation. Right now it's at zero. So down here across the bottom is how many frames that we have, and depending on how many frames per second, we might see, you know, take longer or shorter. I'm going to kind of just click on this line right about, right about here. It's going to ask me to enter a degree of, uh, or a degree of rotation. So I'm going to say 360, and I'll leave it at frame 40. So by hitting enter there, it kind of locks that in. So you can see this little graph more or less. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit play. So you'll see it will rotate. I have a speed option here too. And I can also even just tell it to loop. So if I hit play, and I can speed it up a little bit if I want. And we'll keep looping through that animation. If I have a motion study here later on, if I render in the cloud, I can actually tell it to render this motion study as an animation. Uh, we won't do that in this video, but we'll we can we that there's some we have the possibility of doing that. I want to thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email one of the email addresses on the screen. And again, thank you for watching.